Special thanks to our promotional partners at the American Philatelic Society. The APS is the largest stamp collecting organization in the world, supporting collectors of any level worldwide. For more information about membership and APS services, visit stamps.org. I'm Charles Epting from H.R. Harmer in New York City. And I'm Michael Cortese of Noble Spirit in Pittsfield, New Hampshire. And this is Conversations with Philatelists. So, Charles, today we've got a really interesting and different episode for our viewers and listeners out there. We're going to be promoting the next virtual StampX again, but we're doing it in a slightly different way where we're talking to two partners and two sponsors of the of the show. So we're going to have four different segments. So we're going to get four different perspectives on uh, what to expect. Because the, the first StampX was a lot of fun. I heard a mm-hmm. lot of positive feedback. Uh, but, but obviously, you know... It, it, whenever there's a first time for something, there's going to be some uh, kinks to iron out and, and, and certainly a steep learning curve. So I, I think that um, everyone involved, the sponsors, the partners, the, uh, uh, the, the, the PTS themselves are, are taking uh, what went right the first time and mm-hmm. uh, the feedback that received from people to put together an even better uh, second virtual stamp X. So I, I'm really excited. Yeah. Um, we think- we we got we got to talk to a lot of the people who attended virtual stamp X last time, but this time it's going to be interesting to talk to the people who are actually putting on the show for people to attend, and and they're organizing, helping organize the events, the the speakers, and hosting the collectors lounge and the auditorium. It's it's going to be. We're, do you want to take a second? We can talk about who our absolutely. Uh, so, so to, people to, are that to, we're talking to. But to kick things off, we're going to be talking to two gentlemen from the Global Philatelic Network who are sponsoring the Collectors Lounge. Uh, this is Dieter Michelson and Andre Schneider, uh, mm-hmm. who both work for Heinrich Kohler, which is part of the Global Philatelic Network. Uh, from there, we are going to talk to Chris King, who's representing the Royal Philatelic Society of London. They put on a great speaker series at the first virtual stamp X, and uh, we'll do so again this time around. So then we're going to be talking to Heidi from the APS. They're one of the sponsors of the show. And I think they've been great partners with the PTS as well. I think oh, yeah. both of them have been sort of figuring out this whole virtual philatelic thing together. They sponsored and the PTS awards. Exactly. I, I like seeing so much uh, cross-pollination between, uh, between the PTS and the APS. Exactly. Then we'll be talking to Ian and Josh from Spink. And they're Who going to be are... putting on the, uh, the auditorium. Where exactly. all the they, they, speakers they, that Chris say, King we're, is getting. We're, Chris is getting the speakers. They're going to be at the Spink Auditorium. I love seeing this sort of, uh, uh, you know, symbiosis in the hobby. I think yeah. it'll be uh, really fantastic. So so with that, why don't we bring in Dieter and Andre from the, uh, the Global Full Talk Network? Yeah, absolutely. We've got a lot to cover. We're going to try and do it as we're, quickly we're, as possible. <laughs> absolutely. And we're also globe trotting too, because Dieter and Andre are in Germany. So let's yeah. uh, let's let's ping ourselves over to, to Germany. Great. Perfect. Let's bring him in. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good afternoon. How are you guys? Good, thanks. Yeah. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good to see you, Andre. Uh, Dieter, Andre, thank you so much for joining us and, and for your support of Virtual StampX. Um, I, I guess the first thing I wanted to ask you is what your experience was with the first Virtual StampX late last year and, uh, and, and, and how you expect this one to be different. And, and maybe, you know, it was, I think it was great for a first time, but but certainly they're uh, doing things to improve it. So I'm curious uh, again what your experience was with the first one, and where you think the second one will will build upon that. Well, as you as you said, Charles, it was the first virtual stamp exhibition that ever took place, and um, I don't envy Andre for having to for having had to organize all this because um, it was so so difficult. I mean, everything started from scratch. Everything was completely theoretical. We didn't really know um, how things would work out. And, uh, but then um, finally, Andre worked together with Isabel's team and it was really, it, it turned out that technically everything worked fine. We were quite happy with it. But um, you know, if you ask an old man like myself, who's now over 60, or even Carl, who's nearly 60, um, for us, all this is so difficult to, to cop onto. Uh, but nevertheless, we see that it's something necessary, especially now during this pandemic situation, that something like that had to be set up. And we're happy that it was set up. But of course, for us, the outcome is far, far away from what an outcome would have been from a, a physical Stampex. And um, we, what we really remember was um, after Carl's 
uh, presentation of the book he had and the possibility for people to um, have a look into Carl's um, card register index of Great Britain. Um, it became very, very lively. So at the end of the day, from that point of view, we are very, very important, especially for the, the, the value we could bring there. I mean, it's, it's very difficult for us who have always done everything physically to try to bring value to an event like that, that is digital. It's for us, this will be a learning process for the next, for the next years, if these kind of events continue like that. Andre, you're, um, uh, you've had it your hand in, in designing um, booths for, for exhibitions such as Stockholmia. Um, th th this is a big part of your job with companies, the marketing and, and the promotion. What is it like for you to design a, a physical booth like the, the masterpiece that was in Stockholm in 2019 versus laying out what um, the, the Global Philatelic Networks program is for a virtual show? How is it similar and how is it different uh, for, for you, uh, especially because you and myself and Michael are, are not um, old men like like Dieter. Uh, we're we're of a younger generation, uh, and, and, and this is more I, I would say natural to us. So so how do you approach this and come at this? Oh, yeah, well, um, we started in uh, 2019 with a great booth at uh, Stockholmia, uh, and we really um, had a concept behind that, and we wanted to transfer this concept to following uh, stamp shows um, and. This was what we tried for virtual Stampex as well. We wanted to tell a story and put this in order. And we had to find out that this is completely different. So that virtual Stampex is working completely different. Um, you can, well, from our perspective, you cannot tell a full story. It's not that experience as if you would have in, uh, at a live stamp show. Um, so this was for us a bit disappointed, and this is the um, the 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 yeah the most critical point when we are working on the next virtual stampex to um, make the stand attractive for the people for the visitors um, to to take part at our stand and to communicate with them. Moving forward, do you see there being uh, obviously you know. Dieter, you said it. we all want to get back to, to physical shows. We all want to get back to meeting people and making those connections and just having those little um, uh, chats with people that we don't expect. Do you think that virtual shows will coexist side by side with uh, physical shows moving forward? Do you see a future where there's sort of a hybrid model? I think that um, the physical STEM shows have, on the one hand, sometimes too much lay out of there. I'm now I'm just thinking about the exhibits themselves. Like today you go with an eight frame exhibit, you go to any country in the world and you hang up your eight, your eight frames, but there are hundreds of other collectors who this, do the same thing. So at the end, you end up with a, a huge, massive space full of frames that are basically full of specialized collections that again, specialized collectors can understand and um, they can be grateful for being able to see these. But I think, for instance, that eight frame shows in future, one could possibly show all the eight frames virtually, but the gems of the collection in one frame during the exhibit, during the exhibition hmm. in person. I think this would be added value because um, the collectors going around, they would, be, they would be led through the key items and would not have to drag through trying to understand the, the red line of the collection and this kind of stuff. And it would, it would save a lot of space and it would not be so um, like a big wall for those who want to dive into stamps. I mean, it's, it's so difficult nowadays for newcomers to actually understand those 2000 frames that are out there. It's so, so difficult. And this would make things much more, much easier. And then um, I also see the part where there are, um, let's say, uh, talks given by specialists. Like um, if, if somebody lives in Rome and he wants to listen to this talk of somebody who specialized in GB and he has this talk in, in London, um, I hope that in future um, the, the hybrid solu solution will 
give the possibility for people to follow these um, speeches um, broadcasted. These kind of things where I think this can be a solution where um, everybody would gain from um, these both um, virtual and live exhibitions. Exactly. And, and I think it's interesting that that's how the uh, auction world has been trending for, for many years now, where, yes, there's still some people who want to go in person, but it's become so easy to, to follow along online and stream video or audio. Have you noticed uh, any sort of increase in participation in the auction world over the last year? And do you think that sort of excitement and, and, and participation, um, uh, you know, sort of carries over into uh, virtual talks and exhibitions and things uh, as, as we move forward? Last week, we had our um, international auction in Zurich. It went on for six days, Monday through Saturday. And there was no live um, appearance allowed for public. But it was as good, if not even better, than other auctions we had in the past with live uh, people there. Um, the results were just fantastic. They were tremendous. We had more than 800 um, participants who um, registered for bidding. And um, prices went sky high. No matter which um, area you take, um, we were so, so um, pleased with the, with the results. Now, I suppose that part of this positive outcome is, believe it or not, the pandemic situation, because there are so many collectors who now are allowed to take their time um, and, and, and devote some time to their stamp collection, whereas before they might have been more restrictive when it came to this. But also, I, we, we believe that this t kind of media, this kind of medium that is the participation in the auction online gives collectors much more freedom in acting the way they feel to act during, during an auction. Some might be too shy to lift their hand because uh, they feel, you know, they might bid now and then at the end they will lose. At home they don't care because they just press a button or, and then they stop pressing a button. It's something that, that helps the auction a little bit, especially those people who are too shy to, to come in and and act um, on stage, but um, and in general, um, the, the, this this combination of the the work working from home in the auction and at the same time the pandemic situation has helped auctions a lot in the last months. Not only in our uh, Korinfila auction in Zurich, but also all the other auction houses in Germany are so happy with the results they've had uh, now in the last months. And as, as far as I hear, also in other countries in this world. So the last thing I wanted to ask you is, is what people uh, can expect uh, for this for this next virtual Stamp X. And, and I believe you guys are sponsoring a collector's lounge. Andre, can you talk a little bit uh, about what that's going to be like? Yeah, correct. Um, that's something new for virtual Stamp X. Um, we, uh, or the Stamp X is uh, creating a lounge uh, where collectors can meet uh, and chat with each other. and. Um, also, there are some activities in the launch uh, which uh, taking place, um, and yeah, this is something new. And um, we are sponsoring this this launch and hope that uh, people can interact there. And this is something we we noticed from the last with the Stampex. Um, so um, this is the opportunity from from having this digital um, stamp show that people can meet, which they cannot do physically. Like, right now and um, having these presentations, having talks with each other, being connected. Um, it's not like meeting in real, but it's it's helpful at these times. It's better than nothing at this point. Yeah, yeah. That's right. And if I may add that, um, don't get us wrong. Uh, we really love online live bidding, but we also love people having in the room and um, <laughs> having a full auction room and uh, interact with the people um, on on our venue. So um, online live bidding is a great help in this. Um, but there is still something special about looking out over a, a sea yeah. of, of faces. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we really think it's so, so important for us, for a company like us and a group of companies like ourselves to support this kind of event, because um, we think that we also um, owe to those people who have so far 
organized the live um, event that is the British Philatelic Association and also the PTS. We owe them thanks for what they've been doing for the last decades. And we also um, owe, I think, a thank you to Isabel and her team who have gone through this risk of uh, you know, showing us new paths and um, bringing new ideas to our heads. So that's also one reason why we think it's so important for us to sponsor th these events. Well, again, we're really excited. We'll see you guys in the lounge, I hope. Yeah. We'll, uh, well, since since I, haven't, I haven't seen either of you in uh, over a year now. Look uh, forward to being served with the coffee by you, Charles. <laughs> uh, happily, Dieter, happily. No, again, thank you guys for, uh, for, for your thank support you. and for taking the time to talk to us. And uh, again, we'll, we'll see you at Virtual Stamp X. Thanks, Michael. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was great. Um, uh, you know, full disclosure, uh, uh, Dieter and Andre are my colleagues. Dieter is my boss. So uh, so it's always fun to, to catch up with them in a in a Zoom call like this. So that was, uh, yeah, again, that was just sort of interesting for me to get to interview my my coworkers. <laughs> yeah, it was it was exciting to hear what they had to say about how they're adapting to the virtual experience, what they're looking forward to, what they think could be improved in the future. But they're open to to the idea, to the change, which Absolutely. is ultimately what we're trying to accomplish here, is that everybody feels comfortable in this uh, in this virtual world. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, so with that, let's uh, let's get Chris King from the uh, Royal Philatelic Society of London uh, patched in here as well. We're we're now going from Germany to to the United Kingdom. Hello, Chris. Hi. Hi there. Good Thanks for uh, hi, yeah. hello Charles. Thanks for uh, taking the time out to join us. My pleasure, pleasure. So to to kick things off, we we've we've been through one virtual stamp X already. We're gearing up for the second one. Can you talk a little bit about your involvement, uh, you know, and, and your impressions of of um of the first virtual stamp X in the second half of last year? Surely, um, my involvement was to coordinate um, everything that the Royal was doing. That's everything through from talks to um, the attendance at the, uh, the chat room and all of that stuff. Um, I say I coordinated it. A, a lot of other people did the work. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a good place to be. And I have to say that the, the people who did the IT and the people from the experts did a really good job. So that's what I did then. Um, my impression of how did it go, I thought that the talks and presentations went really well. Um, and so for the first time round, I think, I think it went extremely well. And um, I think most people were impressed. So I, we were content, which is why we're doing it again. Right, right. What would you say that you're looking forward to the most uh, in the second time around? Uh, two things, I think. The, the, the first is um, is the people. Um, one of the great things about a stamp show is the people. And uh, we might not be able to see each other. Well, we can see each other, but we might not be able to <laughs> sort of meet physically and get a coffee or a glass of wine or go out for dinner. But that social interaction is great. And that's one of the super things about Zoom this year, um, the whole of this year now, nearly. <laughs> and it's gone on and on and on. So I'm looking forward to the people more than anything else. I'm also looking forward to some of the talks. Mm. And the, the Royal is going to try to aim it much more at the collector rather than the exhibitor this time. And we're finding that a little bit difficult. It's, it's easy to, to, pick your, to pick your niche, if you like, if you're doing exhibitors, because it's a fairly tightly defined right. group. But we're going to try and sort of meet the needs of collectors right through from you know, the nearly beginner all the way through to the specialist. What I'd really like to do is to help collectors how best to understand their stuff. Right. I'd like to help collectors understand how best to preserve their material, present their material. I'd like to help collectors really sort of know the background, where to get the literature. So yeah. I, th I think that we're in, I hope we can be in the business of helping collectors because one of the important things is the Royal is a charity and it's it, we're responsible to um, well we're responsible to the charity commission for delivering a, a public benefit 
And that public benefit is something which I think the Royal has, is, is, is learning how to do now. So I'm looking for speakers who can actually bring in more people who are perhaps not quite so expert, perhaps not quite so learned, perhaps not quite so experienced. M moving forward, obviously, uh, you know, you're, you're, uh, uh, you, you've attended a lot of stamp X's in person. Do you see there being a, a, a synthesis between the online and the physical moving forward? What do you think the future is? Because, you know, you know, as great as uh, an online stamp show is, it, it, there's things you can't replace. And um, I can't wait to hop back on a plane and, and get to stamp X in person. So wh where do you see things going in, in, in the future? Uh, uh, do, do you see sort of a hybrid model? Well, I, I'm the same. I, I was I'm really looking forward to coming to Chicago later in the year. But whether it's going to be possible or not, I really don't know. <laughs> So we will see. Um, I think that the um, the future the future has clearly got a, a bigger digital element in it than we expected. Um, I don't think anything replaces um, a show in person. Um, but I think that if we are careful and if we're clever, we can actually build the relationships between collectors around the world in a way in which we were not able to do before. Mm. And I hope, what, I hope that that, the digital relationship, uh, turns into a relationship in person um, over time. So I think we've got a way of bringing people in to what I call the enterprise, um, which we didn't have before. And I've been astonished at the turnout for um, Zoom meetings and presentations. I mean, these have been endless. Yeah. around the world in the United States, which has been fantastically successful with the Collectors Club, um, with our own, but with the German Federation and the Italians, I mean, and, and, and the stuff that Mark Andava did in India, we were able to build a digital world which we didn't have. So, and I don't know how to do this, I really don't, um, we actually have to figure out how to make a hybrid. Mm. Um, and I don't think it's an either or. I just really don't know how we do that. Certainly presentations can be hybrid events at shows. But, you know, there's nothing like a philatelic dinner or, um, you know, philatelic dinner for an argument. Um, there's nothing like a philatelic dinner or, or so on, just, just for a piece of social fun. And that's not going to come out of digital. So I don't know how the package is going to work for the future, but um, we need to get some people working on how it's going to be. Now, you guys are very young. And um, so are some of the people organizing Stampex. So I'm looking forward to being told what we're doing rather than telling other people <laughs> what we're doing. So, so, so help. <laughs> when you talk about getting more people involved, I almost see a parallel because for a long time, the Royal was, was more or less an exclusively British organization, I would say. And it seems like in, in recent years, there have been great strides made in, in uh, you know, you had a, a non-British uh, president to the Royal for the first time recently. And, and membership from around the world. Uh, and, and I almost see that, that Stamp X, which is a very British stamp show, uh, can almost sort of uh, appeal to a much wider audience now um, you know, a, as it opens up to more parts of the globe. Yeah, there's a, there's a, oh dear. What, what year do you think it was when the Royal had, um, let's say 60% uh, of its membership overseas? It's in hmm. the 70s. Really? <laughs> wow. Well, no, it's actually 40%, 60% now. Um, but we've actually had a, we, we've had this kind of invisible, it's like, like an iceberg, you know, we've had this invisible um, membership uh, scattered around the world uh, and now in over 70 countries. Um, but they've, they've been there for a very long time. And I think what the Royal's doing is it's kind of catching up with reality. <laughs> you know, I mean, we're, we're a venerable institution and not only that, we're British, God help us. <laughs> And it takes us a while to catch up with things. And, um, and I think that that's really what's been happening, certainly in this last 20 to 25 years. And, and, and I think, I hope Philately is better for it, certainly the Royal's better for it. Um, we, we, we do have a very strong relationship now with our overseas representatives and members. And I hope the digital thing can actually help that grow. Because yeah. it's not, but it's, you know, it's not only overseas members i mean you know there are people in the uk who it's a it's a nearly a 800 mile round trip to come down to a two-day show or whatever or, or indeed for a, for a royal event mm -hmm. and i think they're going to use zoom 
and the other physical. We've got a lot of older people involved in philately, and I think that um, this is another way of keeping them involved. And I certainly think that having these uh, RPSL sponsored talks at Stampex is a huge part of that. I think that uh, certainly extends the the reach of the organization. Yeah, uh, yeah. and uh, we're always in the business of looking for speakers. So um, if you're <laughs> interested in presenting at Stampex, please let me know. Well, we, we, we certainly appreciate, you know, as, as just consumers who uh, who are on the receiving end of, of this, we uh, we appreciate what you do uh, and, and, and hopefully... Uh, uh, you know, hopefully we'll see you in Chicago or or if not, we'll see you in the UK uh, sometime really well, if, soon. I if hope. not, it's going to be 2022. So we will see. We're in the hands of the government and the coronavirus. And yeah. we'll see how long it takes us to get out the other side. We'll keep our fingers well, crossed and, and do whatever we can. And we appreciate you for the work you're doing. Well, yeah. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, Chris. Thanks. Cheers, man. Well, I, I thought the speakers at the first virtual stamp X were fantastic. It mm -hmm. sounds like Chris is uh, is hard at work uh, delivering a. It sounds like it's going to be a different approach this time, which yeah. I'm excited. You know, less tailored towards exhibiting, more tailored towards collecting. Um, but if anyone can bring together uh, worthwhile speakers, it's it's Chris. I'm really excited yeah. to see what uh, what he's got in store. He's uh, definitely looking forward to those, and and they're they're going to be a, an excellent addition to. We'll, we'll be the, there in the front row. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So, so from the Royal, which is yeah. the preeminent British collecting organization, let's switch gears and, and fly across the Atlantic to the APS, the preeminent uh, American collecting yeah, uh, let's, organization. Let, let's get Heidi on, talk about what the APS is doing in terms of virtual staff X. Perfect. Here we go. Hi. Hi. Hello, Heidi. Hey, 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 hey. So... Thanks, Heidi, for uh, for joining us, talking to us about how the uh, the APS is partnered with the virtual Stampix this uh, this time around, last time around, and and uh, we're hoping to talk to you a little bit about what you guys are doing for the uh, for next virtual Stampix. So, do you mind talking to us about what the APS's plans are for uh, for this virtual Stampix? How you guys are involved? So uh, we're really excited. The, the APS is totally excited to partner with StampX again. They did their phenomenal job uh, with the virtual StampX last year. It was a really cool user interface. And we'll be doing similar um, activities that we did last time, which is we have a virtual booth. And then people can come on in and we will be staffed with uh, various APS directors and then um, different members of the APS team come into the chat room and we get to interface with members and then people who are interested in checking out the APS. Again, we have 28,000 members worldwide. So we, we just want to impress upon people that it is an international organization. Mm -hmm. And that's again, why we feel being a part of StampX is so important because it, it represents the global philatelic community. So um, it's uh, we, we had a wonderful time last year or last fall. In fact, for Stamp Chat, there was a gentleman that I was trying every which way to Sunday to locate. I was, I was <laughs> I mean, writing letters, et cetera. He happened to be in the chat. So I was able to get a stamp chat presenter oh, wow. and um, it was just, it's it, the, the, the chat room function is, is a lot of fun because you can have so many people from our side talking and um, you get notifications when somebody comes in and it just gave us a really cool opportunity to keep the conversation going and answer more questions and, and ultimately get more uh, APS members. So we were really thrilled about that. Do you feel like having virtual StampX has introduced a lot of American collectors to StampX? Because it's a huge, you know, time commitment and monetary commitment to to fly to the UK for a stamp show. But doing it online, it must make the world a whole lot smaller and and allow a lot of APS members to interact with Royal members or British collectors and and vice versa. So, uh, do, do you think it's um, uh, it's introduced a lot of American collectors to the the British side of things? I do. I, I believe that we've had a lot of APS members, uh, domestic members, definitely you know, armchair travel all over the world and in particular to Stampex. And this concept of 
just American mind uh, and, and that you are kind of boxed into where you are because of money or, or traveling, it, it's just gone out the window. And so it's, um, I think there's been a lot of members who have been introduced to uh, Great Britain, to India, and it's been phenomenal. Everybody's talking now, whereas once mm -hmm. it was more siloed. Now everybody in the world is talking and, it, and it's just been great for the hobby. You know, we've spoken to a lot of people that, that attended the virtual Stampex that, that plan on now attending in-person ones that hadn't before, myself included. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, been, uh, it's been phenomenal and, and people have largely been talking about the, the chat functionality, which is it's not something that uh, <clears throat> you really get elsewhere. You know, it, message boards aren't as fluid or, or anything like that. But uh, we had speak, spoken with uh, Dieter a little earlier, and, and he um, talked a bit about how it, it kind of brings people out of their their shell. So we had talked about bidding mainly, but but in with the chat functionality also, there's people conversing with each other that might not have gotten a chance to speak with each other. And I think the last virtual Stampex we kind of touched upon this is it, it it almost brings everybody to the same level and allows them to communicate. And, and learn and share and, and it's been fantastic. Yeah. I agree with that. Uh, that layer of anonymity mm -hmm. really allows people to come out of their shell. And that's, that's now the social hour, you know, these chat rooms and, and you do, you create friendships, you can have those direct messages and begin to create a, a relationship with these people. And that continues on past Stampex. So Absolutely. I think we're going to see a lot of Americans, a lot of APS members going to London once we once we get the green light to go. And also, I want people to know to come over to the American Philatelic Society booth, come say hello, and we will have special member pricing, a, a cool promo for anybody who's coming to StampX and is not a member of the APS. But you'll have to come over to our booth to find out what that is. <laughs> Well, and, and that's Perfect. a great segue into the last thing I wanted to ask you is what do you hope that people will get out uh, other than the obvious, um, uh, you know, uh, socializing and, and friendship and conversation? What, what is your goal for people to take away from the APS's virtual Stampex booth? If somebody uh, visits the booth, what do you hope the, the, their biggest impression would be? Well, I, the biggest, our hope for someone coming to the booth who does not know what the APS is about is to know that we're an international organization. I think that that's really important. And then looking at the two of you, reminding people of all the great programs that we have, namely the YPLF, that's a very special program. And um, just letting them know that the dynamic nature of, of this organization. I think people forget sometimes that it's more than just a magazine and an annual stamp show. There's so much more going on uh, at the APS. Again, a lot of people, they read their AP every month, and that, that's great. That's their involvement with the hobby. But if you want to take that next step and if you want to dig deeper, there's uh, so much more that can be uh, uh, gleaned out of out of the society. So much more. I mean, and, and our website figures are showing it with 50,000 hits a month. So, wow. Um, yeah. There's a lot happening, and and that's really what we we want to do. We want to we want to function as a hub, you know. Um, so people think of the hobby, and and this is one area where they can go to. Now I, and we'll continue to collaborate with everyone. Everyone is a partner as far as we're concerned. So um, we just want to we just want people to come in, and and we can say hello, and um, and like I said, just uh, just kind of dissolve this myth that it's just an American organization because it really it, at this point particularly it's it's very international so we're excited to see everybody at Stampax. I was gonna yeah, say we'll yeah. see you and, and hopefully a lot of other friends in the uh, at the APS booth. Absolutely yeah well thank you guys so much for for you know putting this on and letting us all know about Stampax. We're eager to announce its uh, unveiling and um, we'll see you there. Perfect thank there. you so Thanks, much buddy. for joining us. You yeah. bet, guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Well, I, I love seeing the APS working with PTS and, and the Royal and all these organizations coming together, uh, you know, sort of doing away with international boundaries and yeah. 
and uh, and 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 coming together to to put together a great product for the hobby. Yeah, but Heidi talking so much about how the APS is an international uh, organization, and and that's so important. That and I think this is a great it's a people. great opportunity for them to to market themselves overseas, and and that's yeah. not something that can be done at a. And a physical stamp show as easily. I think that's a unique advantage right. of a virtual stamp X. So lastly, we are going to be talking to Ian Murphy and Josh Barber of Spink. Yep. Uh, Spink, uh, one of the preeminent auction houses, is sponsoring uh, the, the auditorium where all of the speeches that the Collectors Club and the uh, RPSL uh, are, are going to take place. So let's, uh, let, let's get um, Josh and Ian in here to talk a little bit about what they have in store. Yeah, let's see what they have to say. Hello. Hi. Hello, gentlemen. How's it going? Hey. Thanks for joining us, you guys. No worries. Thanks. Good to see you. Nice to be here. Excellent. So, so to kick things off, you guys, uh, Spink was very involved in the first virtual Stamp X, in addition to being involved in physical Stamp Xs for, uh, for, for a long time. What was the, the first experience like for you guys, and, and what do you hope to build upon uh, as we approach uh, virtual Stamp X number two? Yeah, the first time it was it – was, huge learning experience, I think. I think we, we weren't really sure what we were going to get out of it, um, and we weren't sure what customers would make of it. Uh, I think, no, it, it was it was a good experience overall. Um, the first time around, we, we approached it in a way we held a series of auctions uh, during virtual Sampex. I think we had one uh, almost every day, mm -hmm. um, one in the morning and one in the afternoon to cover all three days. Um, I think this time around, what, we, what we're planning on doing is a slightly different approach, but we haven't got auctions going on this time. What we, what we intend to do is try and do more sort of virtual valuations, more engaging with clients, speaking with them, finding out how we can help them enhance their collections, uh, what they need to, to add to it. And also if they're ultimately, if they're looking to sell, um, we can obviously assist that, that side of things as well. So I think I think we're just trying to come at it from a different angle. Certainly, the first time around, it, it was it was a learning experience, but it was really good. And I think we can try and build off that this time around. Yeah, exactly. I think the same. We had a situation where you know we couldn't all you know we had at least one of us auctioneering. We were telephone bidding at the same time. So this would be a nicer chance for us, the whole team, to sort of engage with clients, which would be good. I, the fact that you guys are sponsoring the auditorium as well, I think, is uh, is really great because it shows that you know, uh, in the auction business, it's not just about holding auctions and, and making money and whatnot. To me, it's the perfect marriage of sort of stewardship for the hobby, of sponsoring the dissemination of knowledge, and and I really like that that it shows that Spink is you know you guys aren't just in this to hold an auction and then uh, yeah. you know get, get, <laughs> I, 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 can, can you talk a little bit about that the, the um, you know responsibility of an auction house to promote the hobby in other ways. I think it's quite an important part of of the sponsoring package for us actually was, was doing the auditorium because I think I think there's there's ten uh, very important talks lined up this time at least and I'm sure there's more to be added in, in the future but I think that that's kind of the essence of 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 the hobby is learning from other people um, and you listen to other people who who have been doing it for years and years and certainly for, for, for people of our age the younger generation you know, it's all about trying to get as much information from others as you can and. and the auditorium is exactly the right platform and the way in which it's it's digital and we've seen the the whole hobby transformed into this whole new digital era and it's just been um accelerated with with COVID 19. um i think this is this is the perfect opportunity for the hobby to sort of embrace technology and the auditorium does does exactly that it's it's, it's gathering information online in, in a way in which which we think that spink is is positioned um exactly in that right direction we, we see our our business going down that, in that direction the online routes um, and we think the auditorium is exactly in line with, with our business yeah exactly and if i can just add i was also sure. thinking of sort of like the the lovely thing i think when i look back you know having only been at spink for a couple of years but looking at the sort of track record of some of the collections we've been able to handle some of the collectors we've got to know you know and you know, we, we, we material comes through, we see what they're looking for. And so then to, to see these great names, not only in the catalog, but actually talking passionately about their collections in the auditorium setting, it's a, it's a really nice marriage. 
Yeah, that's fantastic. It's fantastic that you the the first one you held the auctions and then you learned from it and kind of pivoted on the next one and you're you're engaging more with the wide audience that the virtual landscape kind of provides. Yeah. And uh, did you have a if I may ask, did you have a large turnout in regards to that same direction you're taking last time and that's what caused you to think you should do more outreach in that area? I think it, it's um a case of we, we've missed that social interaction for so long now yeah. that this was a, a good opportunity to try to do something different where we could engage with clients. Um, I think the whole the whole hobby is a, is a, is a social hobby um, and with the absence of stamp shows where you naturally you, you speak to people, um, we, we're missing that, everyone's missing that and this, this is the opportunity to do that, to, to speak to clients who, you know, perhaps we only used to speak to in, in passing at an exhibition very briefly. We might just reconnect with those guys um, and chat further about the hobby and um, hope to do more business and help to be able to help them with their collection. Well, and that sort of segues into the other thing I wanted to ask, because I picture you guys at stamp shows, whether it's Monaco or stamp, you know, us being from the States and you guys being from the UK, we only really ever see each other, um, you know, at, at a big event. Um, how do you see the, the virtual and the physical uh, working together moving forward? Because obviously it'll be great when when we can all uh, you know get together and, and have a drink like like in Monaco or something. Yeah. Uh, but but it, you know it, it would be a shame to lose the momentum that has been built up over the last year. So how do you see the the virtual and the physical uh, coexisting once things start to loosen up a bit? I think I think there always will be a place for a physical stamp show. I think I don't think they'll ever go away. And I hope they don't. Um, I, I really enjoy them, as I'm sure everyone does. And we're all craving for one now. But I do think what everyone's learned also is there is also quite a strong place for a virtual element uh, in the digital side. And that goes from like the RPSL, the talks that they've held, um, and, and virtual stamp picks. All of those elements are sort of additions to the hobby perhaps we didn't realize could exist mm. um, and have become a, a great part of the hobby and have really enhanced it. Um, and I hope they don't go away, and I think they will exist alongside each other. Um, certainly going forward, I, I hope they do. Yeah, I was thinking the same, and to pick, you know, you mentioned Monaco as an example. That's a great example to say, well, there'll be sometimes, you know, you, at Monaco show, the end of the show, you, there will be collectors and clients that you end up saying, well, we'll see you in two years' time at the next Monaco film. But now um, these virtual shows can sort of, they would, you know, we obviously will look forward to seeing them in person in Monaco, but then we have the opportunity to engage um, in between, which is a great um, yeah. benefit. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then the, the last thing I've got is uh, in addition to virtual stamp X, uh, you know, as much as you guys can tell, what's in store for Spink as, uh, as, as 2021 carries on? What's, uh, what's on the agenda? Because you had some great sales last year. Uh, yeah. you know, where, where are things headed now for you guys? Um, we've got a lot, we've got a lot of exciting things coming up. Um, stuff that we can talk about. We've got a Southeast Asia cell, which is imminent. It's happening in a couple of weeks time. Uh, and then we hope to have a, a, a Great Britain sale again in following one from the excess of, we've had two quite good GB cells recently. Um, so we'll have another one again in May. Um, we also have a collector series uh, in May, along with an important sense of the world sale in May. So. There's quite a bit going on, and as the year progresses, we'll be able to announce further further sales. But the, there's certainly a, a busy schedule again uh, for the next year. Last year was certainly not quiet for us. So. Mm. Yeah, and again, that's the the lovely thing of the of the virtual world that in this you know this situation that nobody could predict, we've been able to hold the auctions despite the situation. Yeah. Um, we've been able to, you know, engage more and more bidders on, on Spink Live or Stamp Auction Network or various platforms, uh, and I think we'll probably try as well. We'll keep going with our, you know, YouTube um, videos to try and promote um, highlights of the sales beforehand. So um, that's certainly something we'll carry on with. Perfect. Well, that sounds great. Well, thank you both so much. Congratulations on all the success you guys have been having with your past auctions, and we're really looking forward to the uh, auditorium. Great. Yeah. Thanks so Thank much. You. Great to nice to speak to you both. Thanks for asking yeah. us. Yeah. Absolutely. Great. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Take care, guys. Bye. I mean what I say when I think it's really important that Spink sponsors the auditorium and, and the Global Philatelic Network, Heinrich Kohler and Corin Phila sponsor the Collector's Lounge. You know, as, as somebody in the auction business myself, I think it's really important that we get back to the hobby and that we 
um, you know, provide people with a space to learn and a space to uh, interact with one another. You know, it's not just about holding auctions and, and selling stuff. It, it's as much about being a part of the hobby. And I think that both Spink and Kohler and Cornfila are, are really doing a great job of that. And, and uh, I'm proud, again, as a, a fellow uh, member of the auction business to see that going on, because I think that's really the future. Yeah, after after talking to to all four panels, if you will, it it really feels like the direction that this virtual Stampex is taking is involvement in the with the collectors yep. between the the speakers and the collectors lounge and the auditorium that the speakers. It's are less of in. a spectator sport now, yes. and I think it's more about you know uh, uh, again getting people involved, breaking down those barriers that shyness the, I, i've certainly experienced at a stamp show that intimidation mm -hmm. um I, I think that that uh stamp x is, is doing a lot to remove those barriers get everyone involved again the auction houses are providing people with a space to yeah. uh to, to commingle um and uh I'm, I'm really excited to see what comes to the show i'm, I'm certainly going to be there well because we have a booth we do have a booth yes <laughs> so we should mention <laughs> that as well so that's why michael and i will be there is we actually have a conversations with philatelist booth yeah and, and michael has said he's going to man this thing 24 hours uh if anybody asks for me he'll forward the message <laughs> and i'm really uh, appreciative of that michael thank you that's yeah that's no absolutely really generous mm -hmm. i'm sponsored by our local coffee shop revelstoke uh no see, seriously though i'm gonna try and be there as much as i can over these uh, couple of days then and, mm -hmm. and you know, maybe you and I can tag team it so that one of us is there uh, at all reasonable hours. Yeah. Um, but I'm excited for this again uh, as a as a participant. Uh, you know, as an attendee, I'm excited. Uh, yeah. But also as a, a booth holder this time around, I think we're uh, it, we're it'll... we're thrilled to see where things go. Yeah, it'll be a much different experience. I'm I'm excited that they're they're learning, they're building, and it's it's going to be a uh, it's going to be a great time. I really think so. Well, I, uh, I I certainly will see you there, and and hopefully we'll uh, hear from some of our listeners who attend. If you if you register and if you show up, stop by the booth, leave us a message, yeah. um, and uh, we I feel like we should like ask a trivia question or something that people can answer as proof that they came to the show because of our podcast. <laughs> as time goes on, we'll 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 uh, we'll brainstorm a little more. But some some information about the show: the registration yeah. opened February eighth, so this episode is airing February eleventh. Registration opened. Three days ago, um, we'll put links in the description to all Absolutely. that. And the sh show notes. This is something I've heard podcasters say a lot: is the show notes. Oh, okay. The, Do you know about? I like don't know about show notes. That's what the description, description is. That's what it's called. Show notes. Oh, well, we're learning too. Call it. Yeah, so we'll put it in the show notes. <laughs> we'll put it in the show and notes. in the YouTube bio. Yeah. So. Um, Additionally, the the show is running um, seventy two hours straight, eight a.m. London time, on March twenty fifth until eight a.m. London time on March twenty eighth. So seventy two hours of continuous, unfiltered philately. It's uh, it's going to be an experience. Ass assuming this vaccine rollout keeps going well, I may have to come up to New Hampshire for <laughs> virtual Stampex. We should be in the same room while doing this. I feel yeah. Uh, monster energy, coffee, whatever it takes to get through this weekend. <laughs> I feel like we, uh, I feel like out of solidarity, we should do this together and see how long we can stay up. Mm -hmm. It'll be, it'll be interesting to see how they implement the physical with the virtual. Maybe the physical shows from now on will be 72 hours straight. I think this would be great. I don't think they should close their doors. Uh, yeah, you think it, I'm joking, but if I show up at your doorstep uh, at the end of March, <laughs> you're going to have to host me. Yeah, this sounds perfect. Uh, awesome. Well, I'm, I'm excited. This is uh, March 25th through 28th, 8th, you said. Yeah. Uh, 72 hours registration opened on February 8th. So if you're listening to this episode when it airs, um, you can register now. If you're listening to us, this is an episode that I think would be really cool to go watch on YouTube because you get mm -hmm. to see a lot of uh, a lot of familiar faces or maybe not so familiar faces. So I, I recommend checking this one out on YouTube, uh, if only to see Claire's uh, post-production uh, work as well. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and with that, uh, looking forward to, uh, to, to virtual Stampex. Yeah, absolutely. But until then, Michael, uh, yeah. we'll, uh, we'll talk real soon. Perfect. Perfect. See you next time. See you next time, Michael. Bye-bye. Okay.